Last time, on Total Drama The Top 100, Alejandro found out that Jasmine was in a relationship with Sean. Jose wanted to form an alliance with Bowie during the camping challenge, but as it turned out, Bowie had different plans. He had Jose lead Bridget out into the woods before abandoning her. And then, at elimination, Bowie betrayed Jose and voted for her, tying the votes. Bridget played her leader token, and that was all she wrote for the Ice Dancer. Bridget is talking to Mike and she says she still can't believe she's still in. She's happy about it, but she doesn't know how. Mike agrees, saying that even though he didn't vote for Bridget, he was thinking for sure that she would leave. Bowie clears his throat and says that it was because of him she stayed. Bridget asks what he means and Bowie says that he was able to get some people that would have voted for her to vote for Jose instead. Mike says that it was really sweet of him, but Bowie says he didn't do it out of the kindness of his heart. He wants an alliance and both of them are the perfect allies for him. Bridget asks what makes her the obvious choice and Bowie says that the two are just fun. Mike has the personality thing and Bridget has her surfer girl stick. It's more fun than the blatantly evil Jose. Mike says that he appreciates it, but he has the personalities under control now. Bowie says, sure you do, before ripping Mike's shirt off and Vito comes out and asks what the big idea is before Bowie yanks the shirt back onto Mike. Bowie says that most importantly, they need to make sure they can hold the majority. They have to figure out someone they can trust with their life to bring into it from this team. Chris welcomes everyone to their next challenge. Of course, it's Phobia Factor. With such a large cast size, it would be redundant to have everyone compete, so teams will elect one person to compete. If they are able to face their fear, then they will win their team immunity. But if they can't, then they are up for elimination. If another team also fails, then they must elect a second member to compete. They will keep going until only one cowardly team remains, and they will go to elimination. In the event that two teams are left, and they both complete their fear, the winners will be immune for elimination while two new competitors must go. Now go discuss with your team who will go. Sierra is sitting with Cody when she says that she wonders who will go. Dawn says that as team leader, she should be the one to set a good example for the others, but Cody says that's a terrible idea. If Sierra loses, she will be voted out. Dawn says that Sierra should still hold majority even in that situation, and besides, she's the only one that could do it. Everyone else lacks the willpower. Cody tries to protest more, but Sierra says she will do it to show her love for Cody. Chris says that that's great. Sierra's challenge is to stay an hour away from Cody starting now. Sierra is shocked, and she says that she will let him go after one goodbye hug, but Chris says nope, it already started, and Cody immediately starts running, saying that he can't be here to distract her. He'll hide for an hour. Joe asks who's up. She personally wants to see chicken legs go, she says while looking at Noah. Priya says she will go. She isn't afraid of anything. Chris asks if that's really the case as he says that she must face her fear and tell her parents what she really wants to do with her life. Priya freezes up and immediately says she can't do that. Chris shrugs and says, suit yourself. Let's just hope someone else is like you. Joe says that that was pathetic, but Devin comes to her aid, saying that he understands what it's like to not be able to talk to your parents about what you really want. There's a lot of expectations that you have to live up to, so to let them down is a guilt worse than death. Joe says that if you don't want the life you want, then that's your fault before leaving. On Mediocre Mealworms, Topher says in Confessional that he snuck a phone in here and the fans are raving a lot more about Lightning than him. This episode, he's gonna shine. Lightning says that he's going, but Topher says to let the pre-mergers have a chance this time, he will go. Lightning Confessional says that he wouldn't usually listen to that pipsqueak, but he has guts to stand up to THE Lightning. He'll let it slide this time. Chris comes out to tell him what he'll need to do, but Topher doesn't let him speak, saying that he studied his gameplay from his last season and he's gonna make sure he's a fan favorite this season. And after that, he will be offered co-hosting deals until he can finally become the host. So what'll it be? Eat chefs discussing cooking out of the toilet, shave a bear, clip Chris's disgusting toenails. Chris says that it's none of those things, Topher would enjoy them too much. Instead, it's something that is a real fear. Have a bad hair day on national TV. Topher freezes up and in confessional says that he was prepared for anything, but that's just cruel. Topher says he can't do it and Lightning groans, saying that he's a show loser. Topher says that at least he wasn't eliminated second and Lightning says that at least he's a winner and Topher says that he didn't win where he lived. Chris tells them to shut up and he'll be back in a bit to get their second competitor. 
On Ravenous Spider, Scott says he definitely isn't going because he knows what his fear is going to be, and Lashona says that for once, she understands. She can't stand spiders even though it's the name of their team. Jen groans and says that she will go with the stipulation that if she fails, then she can't be voted off. Lashona agrees to it and so does Scott, but in confessional, both of them say that if they lose, Jen is going home. Chris goes to Jen and tells her that her challenge is to let a priceless rug be discarded like trash. Jen is clearly in pain, but she stays strong and is able to pass. Taylor goes over and says that that was cruel, and Chris says thank you. He tried his best. On excited Aunt Z says he will go, this should be easy. Gwen asks if he's sure he can handle this, and Z says he totally can. Get it? It's a pun. Soda can, and Gwen interrupts him by saying that she gets it. Chris comes out and tells Z that he must go 10 minutes without drinking soda. Gwen says that this is in the bag, and Z says that he's not sure about that. I mean, 10 minutes is a lot of time that could be spent drinking soda instead of not drinking soda. Man, 10 minutes without it. You'll need a soda to think about this. Z takes a sip of it, and Gwen smacks her forehead in annoyance. In confessional, Gwen says that it's not bad enough that she's on a team with Ezekiel, she's also on a team with Z and Leonard. This is the worst. She wishes she could just eliminate all three of them at once. On Drowning Mosquitoes, Crimson volunteers to go since she isn't afraid of anything, but Chris shows up and says that he had help from Don for this one. Show everyone your face without makeup. Crimson is worried, but Alejandro tells her that if they lose today, she isn't going to be the one he wants gone, which gives her enough security for Crimson to not do it. On Tenacious Earwigs, Sammy says that she can do it, it's about time she pulled her weight around here, and Chris says that her fear challenge is to tell Amy what she truly thinks about her. Sammy is nervous and she asks if she can have some time to gather her thoughts, and Chris says that's fine, but he will come back to get her when it's time to make a decision. Sammy says that she can't do this, but Kelly says that she spoke back to her daughter and things went great. The relationship is so much better. If she speaks back to Amy, things are bound to go great. Sammy smiles at that and Scary Girl says that the worst case scenario, Amy gets really mad and hurts Sammy. On Hopping Stink Bugs, Kitty says that Justin should go, and Justin says that he will as long as they promise to not vote for him if he fails, and Kitty says that she could never vote for him. Chris shows up and says that for Justin's challenge, he must wear a fat suit and have a paper bag over his head for an hour. Justin immediately says no to that. His good looks are all he has. He can't handle that existential crisis if he doesn't have them. Kitty says that means someone else will have to step up and to not look at her. She is fully comfortable not indulging in her fear. On the silent cricket, Sean says he will go. He's been fighting his fear his entire life. Chris then says that his challenge is to let Izzy bite him. Sean immediately starts running and says in confessional that zombies just turn you into zombies, but Izzy would probably turn him into some weird, diseased, mutant rabies monster. Izzy rolls her eyes and says that it's his loss. Lots of men would pay for a good bite from her. Chris goes to the Flaming Cockroaches and asks who will go, and Mike says he will go, and Chris tells him to admit to his team his secret. Mike looks around a bit worried, and Bowie tells him that it's okay if he can't do it. He wants it to be done when he's comfortable, not when it's forced upon him, but Mike says that he needs to be true to himself, and he goes to his team and tells them that at the end of All-Stars, he thought he cured his multiple personality disorder, but recently it's been coming back, and he just thought he should let them know that if he acts differently, that's why. It's not a joke. He actually has multiple personality disorder. Bridget in Confessional says that that took a lot of guts to do. She respects him a whole lot more now. Harold in Confessional says that he wishes he had other people in his head. He could be four times as cool, and each personality could know their own martial arts so he could switch between them and be anyone in combat. Sierra is crying and says she misses her Cody bear, and Dawn says that she only has to wait 30 more seconds, and Chris says not even that long. She couldn't reach Cody in 30 seconds if she tried, so he will let it slide and give them the point. Chris goes to the Tenacious Earwigs and tells Sammy that it's time to make a choice, and Sammy decides to go to Amy before telling her off, and everyone just stares in awe. Amy just says that she doesn't care what a cheap copy thinks about her. Despite Sammy's pride being ruined, it gave their team immunity. The teams that still don't have immunity are Scheming Flies, Mediocre Mealworms, Excited Ants, Drowning Mosquitoes, Hopping Stink Bugs, and Silent Crickets. Devin tells Joe to put her money where her mouth is, and Joe says that first of all she's broke, that's why she's here, and second of all she will. Chris tells her that her challenge is to dress like a girly girl complete with makeup. She does so and asks Chris if this is enough, and Chris snaps a photo before saying that'll do. Devin in Confessional says that he's still mad at Joe's insensitivity, but at least she contributes. Lightning says that it's his time, but Emma says that she wants to go, and Lightning asks why he should let her go after Topher messed things up, and Emma just says that she wants to know what they have her fear as. Chris says that her fear is telling everyone who she likes. 
Emma says that she's happy she didn't volunteer then, but Chris says that once it's read out, she has to do it, and Lightning tells her she better compete or else she won't see halftime. Emma says that she still likes Chase, the stupider he gets, the more she likes him. Excited ants have Leonard offering to go, but Gwen says that they don't need this, she will go. Chris says that he'd love to put her into the ground again, but she already passed her fear last time. It's time for Leonard to shine. Gwen is nervous as she hears Chris say that Leonard must slay a mighty beast. Chef steps out in his spider costume, and Leonard says that this is a beast most foul. Z says that he can do it if he believes in himself. Leonard gathers his strength and tries to use a spell, but Chef just stands there. Leonard is utterly terrified, but Z tells him to snap out of it. His spells don't work, he has to, like, use his brain to win. Leonard thinks and realizes the only solution is that the beast has magic resistance. He must slay the beast with physical damage. He pokes the beast with his staff, and Chef says that he has been defeated before walking away, and Z, Ezekiel, and Tom run in and celebrate with Leonard. Emma asks Gwen if she's tired of this team, and Gwen says she was tired of it on day one. Drowning Mosquitoes are next, and Alejandro offers to go. He can prove to be better than his brother. Chris says that his challenge is actually to reveal to each contestant on his team how he feels about them. Alejandro looks around and shakes his head, saying he can't do that. Chris tells him to suit himself, and leaves. For hopping stink bugs, Rodney volunteers to go, and Chris tells him to admit who he loves the most on the island. Kitty says in confessional that it's gonna be her, and she's not ready for it. Rodney says that the girl he likes, the most beautiful girl on the island, is... Mary. Kitty is shocked and gives a sigh of relief before saying that Mary isn't better looking than her. And finally for the silent crickets, Tyler volunteers to go and Chris says that his fear will be the same. He manages to go into the pen with no issue this time, and Chris says that this is definitely more boring than last time. Tyler in confessional says that he was stuck on a boat with tons of chickens. It gave him like exposure therapy and he realized chickens weren't all that bad. Chris says that it's over, drowning mosquitoes will go to elimination. At elimination, Chris says that here, marshmallows represent life. If you don't get a marshmallow, you must walk the dock of shame, board the boat of losers, and you can't come back. Ever. Now, Chef, tell them why they might leave. Alejandro, you weren't willing to be honest about your feelings about your teammates. Others may wonder what you may be hiding. Crimson, you had the chance to win early, but you didn't take it. And Jasmine. Jasmine asks what she did, and Chef says that she intimidates people. Chris thanked Chef and says without further ado, here's who is safe. Eva, Millie, Julia, Jay, MacArthur, and Katie are safe with zero votes. Next up is Crimson, and the final two safe are... Alejandro and... Sam. Jasmine is completely shocked, and when she stands up, she says that this can't be right, but Julia tells her to leave before she takes all the air from way up there. Jasmine says that she has been nothing but nice to Julia, and Julia says that nice is boring. Bye-bye. Jasmine goes to Jay and tells him that he will do fine out here, he just needs to believe in himself. Jasmine on the boat says that this is disappointing. She thought her team was genuine, but in reality it was more like a pit of rattlesnakes all aiming to chomp off her head. Such a shame. Maybe she should have listened to Sean and laid low. The final votes are as follows. Eva voted Sam for being lazy. Sam voted Jasmine due to Alejandro's suggestion. Jasmine voted Sam due to not liking how lazy he is. Crimson voted Jasmine due to Alejandro's suggestion. Millie voted Jasmine due to Alejandro's suggestion. Alejandro voted Jasmine for being a strong player and having a cross-team alliance. Julia voted Jasmine due to Alejandro's suggestion. Jay voted Sam due to Jasmine's suggestion. MacArthur voted Sam for being lazy. And Katie voted Crimson for looking creepy. And that's episode 6. What did you think? Question of the week. What team will fall first? I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'll see you all next time on Total Drama, the top 100.